Hello, this is Larry Stoll, and this is Larry's Likes, May 1st, 2020 edition. And we're going to talk about uh, three or four different posts that were on the web uh, or on Twitter this week that were pretty interesting. The first was this post by um, Micah Woods, where he's he's been working on adjusting uh, the amount of sand that you can put on greens to match the growth rate of the turf. And he's used uh, growth potential, and we've worked with him also on estimating how much growth you're going to have and how much sand you could put on. And you can use that method to sort of get an idea how well the turf is growing and how much sand you need to apply to uniformly just slowly dilute that organic matter layer that's building up rather than trying to put down large amounts of sand and causing layering problems. In this uh, case, he, he has focused on clipping volume. And that's one of uh, Micah's favorites, and a lot of people have been looking at clipping volume. And he uh, suggests that uh, using uh, one liter of clipping volume per meter square uh, is equivalent to one uh, millimeter of depth of sand you should apply. And he backs that up a little bit with some work research that was done by uh, James Hempling. And, and actually, Hempling responded a little bit. And you can take a look at uh, some of this information. But it uh, really comes out to be kind of an interesting idea. So you, you would, uh, if you're monitoring your, your clipping yield uh, through the year, for every liter that you pull off per meter square of clippings, you would then apply one millimeter of sand. And just to give you a rough idea, a millimeter of sand for in the U.S. Uh, area at a density of 1.5 grams per cc, with typical kind of a, uh, a silica sand, it would be uh, a millimeter would weigh uh, about um, 307 pounds per 1,000 square foot. So if you're putting down 100 pounds per 1,000 square feet, that's about a third of a millimeter of uh, top dressing. And that's what uh, Hempfling commented down here uh, in his comments also. He's found that uh, 25 to 100 pounds per 1,000 square feet converted to 0.07 or 0.3 millimeters of depth. Uh, so that's, in the U.S. units, that's an easy way to uh, calculate it. So that was a good one. You might want to check a little bit more into that tweet and uh, look at some of Micah's uh, background and research on that. It was a, it was a nice, nice one to talk about. Uh, growth potential, that's something maybe many of you have heard about before. I'm not going to go into that right now. Uh, then Jim Kearns posted an interesting uh, set of photos on Spring Dead Spot. And on the West Coast, uh, Dr. James Beard at uh, UC Riverside has been lamenting that he's having a hard time getting uniform distributions of spring dead spot uh, because it's a soil borne fungus and it's not easy to get established. These plots uh, are <laughs> make you envious if you've ever tried to work with spring dead spot. I've done a little bit of work on it and it's never this dense in the areas we see out here. But this is to show you what uh, uh, the photos show uh, c the activity of Kabuto and Tekken versus uh, posterity and headway and the uh, non-treated checks. So this is, uh, he didn't say which one is which, but they look about the same, Kabuto or Tekken on spring dead spot control. Uh, this is a combination of posterity and heritage. Looks good, and the non-treated plots are just <laughs> smoked, uh, which is uh, something of beauty to a plant pathologist. Not to most of you, probably, but uh, for testing products and practices, that's just an awesome outcome there. So that's, heads, you know, kudos to Jim Kearns for being able to pull that off. Uh, one of the other things we were, we were monitoring was uh, uh, Bajarni Hansen, Hansen at, uh, in Iceland has posted some photos of fairways with frost heave, and he's uh, now following up on that. This was rolled twice. It looks pretty good, but he, uh, what he started out was this. I mean, just look, I mean it's really hard to imagine how extreme um, that frost heaving was. But uh, uh, Bajarni was able to uh, to get it to look pretty good, and he's probably going to have to work on a little bit more. But that's that's pretty much uh, playable right there. I mean, that's not a, that's not a big uh, problem. The last thing to mention is that uh, John Kaminsky, uh, the Turf Grass Diseases, uh, set up another uh, turf chat this week. It's episode 40, I think. And we're talking with uh, Brad Jagablonski, at uh, Penn State University about some of his work he's doing is teaching uh, irrigation maintenance and some tips and tricks. And uh, that was a very nice uh, episode, and hopefully you'll tune in on some of these later. This will be posted um, 
on the internet as a recorded uh, series. So just keep your eye out for turf grass diseases, and you can check that out then. That's it for now, and we'll um, catch you up with something uh, a little bit later. Bye-bye.